hello everyone my name is prashant and today i am going to talk about the plk case which is said to be a block layer tracing mechanism so before jumping into like what exactly the plk case and what is the uses of this plk case and why we need to use this kind of a tool uh, let's look at what are the limitations of the existing solutions we have so let's say uh, means whenever we need to debug any of the io related issue the first tool which is comes in our mind is io stack so let's say i'm running io stack with icon tx icon t1 and 2 so uh, in most of the cases when we see the possibility of utilization issue with 100% we say that okay yeah or 90 to 100% we say that there's the issue on the io side uh, that is fine and let's let uh, believe that we come up to a conclusion that is the issue from the io side the biggest problem with io stack tools is that it doesn't give us like which proxy is responsible for generating those io okay and if you look at my previous video related to the io management we come up with a one kind of a tool called io top which gives us like which process comes for creating the disk io read as well as write but the uh, another drawback with this solution that it doesn't give us a detailed information so that's why we have a tool like uh, plk trace which gives us a detailed information about a layer by layer so what exactly a plk trace so a plk trace Uh, is a block layer io tracing mechanism which provide us a detailed information about the request tree operation up to the request phase uh, so basically it will uh, it provide us a ability to see what's going on inside the block io layer uh, it is a tool which is used to collect data or in other word we can say it is used to extract data from the kernel uh, and like one thing which you need to remember that it is not a analysis tool we need to feed the data collected by this plk trace to some other tools like the uh, btt or plk pass to get a to get our analysis done third thing which you need to remember about this is we used to track all i related event and uh, then we can tie up with a various kind of attributes like time stamp and the process contact information so uh, with the help of this tool we can generate events for all i requests and monitor it from where it is exactly be evolving so how it is used is basically it leverages the static traces available in your kernel bi bio layer or block io layer so uh, it is first time it has been introduced is starting from kernel 2.6.70 rc1 and like i mentioned like it's basically using a static trace available via, uh, via uh, kernel bio layer so just want to give you like a brief info like uh, this tool is been maintained by a guy called jens xob to the block io level here and uh, maintain it so and the one other advantage of this tool is like it's having a very less overhead as compared to the other tool like less than 2% so means we before we going to see the demo of log, like how plk trace or how plk pass works we need to know a specific operation performed upon each io submitted to the block io layer so like uh, i mentioned in my previous video that generally most of the user process doesn't write directly to a disk they write first to the cache and then from there there are various kind of pressure thread which will flush the data to your disk and between this cache layer and schedule layer there is a small layer called a block io layer where this uh, plk trace works so these are the various types of event which is been captured by this plk trace and we are going to see these tools in the demo section uh like i said that this plk trace is not an analysis tool to analyze the data captured by this plk trace we need to use a various kind of a tool like plk pass bts and bpt so what plk pass does it just pass and format the event which is being captured by the plk trace okay and if you don't want to run the plk trace and a plk pass separately there is a shortcut of a tool called uh, uh bts which is going to generate a live data uh for you and the last one is the btt which analyzes the data from plk trace and generate the time delta for each and every layer so like these are different different kind of a layer for example your d2c layer which is like the io spent in the device so we are going to see all these in the demo section so before we are going to use this uh, tool the first thing we need to do is to uh, mount our debug fs file system so i think if you use it for your system tap or other utility it is a simple ram based file system designed for debugging purpose uh to make a so it is been heavily been utilized by the kernel developer to make information available in the user space so 
and in most of the cases it is been developers are been encouraged, encouraged to use it instead of pop uh, to uh, get any information uh, related to content okay so i already mount this file system which is just to save time okay but if you need to see how uh, to mount it you can mount it with the help of this command mount hyphen t debug ff and further debug ff this is kernel and then debug okay this is the way we can mount this debug ff file system if you mount want to mount it permanently here you can see that i already mounted the debug ff file system if you mount, want to mount it permanently you need to make an entry in that step we say something like that debug then sys kernel debug then debug fs then default and then this is the way we can make a change for system So like I said, it mostly work on your bio layer and we need a, a debug effects file system to make it work. Uh, so by default it captures all the events. So uh, you can limit the number of events it will capture with the help of uh, passing the hyphen option. All these events are being captured. If you want to just filter out some of the events, you can pass the hyphen option and just filter out the event. Okay. Uh, by default, the, extract, the data which has been extracted which has been captured by the BLK trace is captured in the format of device BLK trace CPU format. So let's say if, uh, if I have a device called SDA, so the output is captured SDA.BLKTrace.0 for CPU 0, SDA.BLKTrace.1 for CPU 1, and so on. By default, it is being run forever. If you want to limit it for a certain amount of time, just pass hyphen W and the number of seconds you want to run. So for example, if I pass hyphen W10, it's just going to be for a 10 seconds. So let's see a brief demo of how it works. So like I mentioned, first thing you need to do is to mount the debug effect file system. Okay, and then run this bunch of this BLK trace command. So let's say I run BLK trace hyphen D dev SDA hyphen O to specify the output directory. And if I want to Get this output on my stream. I can give BLK pass. I'm using BLK trace along with the BLK pass, like both the analysis two guys are collecting to uh, at the same time. And now generate some IO on your WSG partition. So DD. Generate 10 MB of file. So you will see that the BLK trace has generated some output for us. Same way, you can use a tool like dtrace. Okay, dtrace to generate some the same output. In the means you don't need to use both the tools. You can just use one tool to generate the output for us. And so then you can see it is going to the meter the entire output. Okay. So if you see in the earlier output the BLK trace is running forever. So we don't want our BLK trace to run forever. We just want to run it for a specific amount of time, capture the output for us, and then we can use our tools to uh, uh, to get a uh, to get the information put it away. So for that we need to use BLK trace hyphen W thirty. That I want BLK trace to be for thirty minutes, thirty seconds. Thirty minutes. That was the partition hyphen O. And instead of getting an output in the format of 
okay set the default output is in the format of device we'll get it i want my own specific file name so i said debugging io any name you can give okay and let me generate some sort of a direct io direct io is the io which is not being fetched so that i i means i am 100% i want to be 100% sure that whatever the data i am testing is coming and is writing directly to disk and not by any kind of a flusher daemon or or vdi or vflush daemon so for that i need to give dev0 okay this time let's write to dev null block size is equal to let me give a small block size count equal to 10 and for writing a direct io i need to use a flag is equal to direct okay. Here, if you can see that two files are created based on the number of CPU I'm running. Let's remove those files that can then capture the output based on this. Okay. So let it run for 30 seconds and then we can analyze the output. Okay. Whatever the output which you can capture. First use a BLK parse to parse that out file and then we will see like what are the different things which is been happening uh, across this system. What are the biggest IO activity which is been happening right now? Okay. So let's wait for 30 seconds. Okay. Now it's done. Like I mentioned, I give a file name to this. Okay. So we have like uh, different CCP on the system. So based on that, uh, the three files are created debug info, GLK trace, and CPU ID. So let's use GLK pass. Hyphen I debug info to pass that file. Okay, so if you can see there are well lot of information which is given by this output. Okay, so let's see some basic one and then we are going to deal with the more complex information. So the first column gives you the major versus the minor number. The second one is the CPU, third one is the sequence, uh, the fourth one gives you the timestamp. Fifth one give you the PID of the process. Sixth one is what are the action which has been happening in this on this. It's read operation or write operation. We are not going to talk about the merge right now. And then this is the offset size and the plus size and whatever the command which is running right now. Okay. So let's look at some of the basic stuff. So here if you can see that this dd is been uh, writing in this much amount of d means a uh, write is issued to the driver and c is for complete so this dd means uh, request is been issued to the driver level and then finally it is in completing this much amount of second okay uh, let's look for some more complex stuff let's look at this piece of code This one. So, few uh, e g p i and u. Let's look at this. So, q means your I O is q. Okay, your I O is q. G means the request structure is being allocated to the particular I O. P means that particular IO is being plugged. I means that particular IO is being scheduled. Okay. Then forget about this. That is the CFQ scheduler. 
use means that use a key is been unplugged. Okay. Now look at D is been IO uh, IO dispatched to a device and C means finally to be. Okay. So this is the way you can see the hole and it takes this much amount to get it complete. Uh, if you go to the bottom, you will get some more information like uh, you will get information like per CPU details. CPU, like I said, uh, what are the different CPUs which are running in your system? So, per uh, as well as the per device detail. So, the info the device. Okay. So, more information you will get like. Uh, like right queued and right dispatched, which is the right which are submitted, the new number of right which is submitted. Okay, uh, right completed, this one. Okay, and in the bottom, if you will see, you will get a throughput also. Okay. The same thing you can do with other collected output. Example for CPU one, you will see like your request skewed, uh, struct allocated, plug schedule, unplug, dispatch to write, and finally the when you see this C, that means your request has been completed. Okay. Same. And at the bottom you will get more information. So means you are getting a wealth of information with the help of this uh, using this DLK trace along with this. Uh, different different components. So, okay, then uh, uh, let's talk about the BTT which is going to generate a time delta for us. So, if I pass BTT with any of this file, like in four hyphen one zero, it's the same, but generating some important info for me, like. Information which is really important for me. So, if you look at BTC, BTC means total IO time uh, from being two to complete. Okay, and, and uh, IO time uh, means uh, BTC is the if you look at these two components, BTC means the uh, amount of time that this IO spent in device, and Q2C means is total time from being two to being completed. Like there are different different components. For example, if you look at this uh, something called I two D. I two D refers to the idle time. There is a time I O. Uh, there is a time I O is skewed. I uh, means I O is idle in the queue. This refers to this I two D. And uh, we have this combination of all these will refer to Q two C. That is the total processing time. <coughs> The sum of all the above one. Okay, so from here you can see like where it spent the maximum number of time. And uh, if you look at the last column, that is the number of IO observed n. So here you can see like uh, on the device queue, uh, uh, it, where it spent the minimum amount of time, maximum amount of time, as well as the average. Okay, so. This seems to be like fairly complicated to debug, and uh, uh, means how to like get information about it with the help of this. So we have a tool, graphical tool called Seek Watcher, uh, which makes our life really easy, easier. Uh, so that uh, let's say I can go C dot C. So from this, it will generate a GUI interface for me. Let's go to the particular machine. And you will 
see something called SBA one SBA two, and here you will see C dot PL. So it will give you the like a QI input, which is much easier to read, like the number of C count, the throughput, all this info. Okay, so which will make your life much much easier. Uh, the other thing which you can do with this is uh, you can even create a movie based on you have a uh, required package installed on the system. So, for example, if I need to create a movie out of this, uh, I can do it with the help of hyphen O. Same thing, I don't think so. I have all the encoders installed, but let's give it a try. Dot NPG, I guess you need to get. If, you are, if I have all the encoders installed in the system, I will get a movie out of it. Okay, so none could have that. So, this is just a brief introduction about uh, uh, BLK trace, which is a really, really powerful tool. You can see like a, uh, where exactly your IO got stuck. So, for example, I'll show you with the help of DPT, like if this is a time spent in the device, this is a time spent, the overall time spent, this is a uh, time. Uh, where it, the, your IO is idle. So you can debug at any layer, you can get the throughput, you can see like uh, what exactly the command which is running, uh, what are the different different parameters you have see like your IO is queued to merge. So you can see it a block by block layer from starting a block layer to up to the all the way to drivers to the disk how your IO will be. Uh, will finally when, uh, when you see the C that is uh, your IO is been completed. So that is like a really awesome tool to give any of the IO related performance issues. So thanks for watching this video. In case of any query and question, you can write to me at elevation.gmail.com. Thanks.